Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate an integral of the form cosine of mx times cosine of nx, where m and n are constant coefficients on these x values here. In this particular problem, we've been given the integral of cosine of 4 pi x times cosine of pi x dx and asked to evaluate it. Now, whenever we have an integral of this form, we can use the identity cosine of a times cosine of b, regardless of the values of a and b, and that can simplify to 1 half times cosine of a minus b plus cosine of a plus b. The reason we're talking about this specific type of integral is because we have this convenient identity that allows us to simplify it. So looking at this original integral here, cosine of 4 pi x times cosine of pi x, we may not know initially how to approach this type of problem, so it's important to know that we can use this identity here. The first thing we need to do to be able to use it, obviously, is to identify values of a and b. The trick to this is to know that our integral is the product of two cosine functions, and the identity here is the product of two cosine functions. So we could have just as easily had this function here inside our integral written as cosine of pi x times cosine of 4 pi x, where the order of them is switched. It's not like the first cosine has to be your value for a, and the second cosine has to be your value for b. The trick for picking a and b is to recognize that here we have cosine of a minus b. Since we have a minus b, we want to choose a as the larger value and b as the smaller value. So we have 4 pi x and pi x. Obviously, 4 pi x is the larger value, so we're going to set a equal to 4 pi x and b equal to pi x. We want to do that so that when we subtract b from a in this function right here, we end up with a positive value. It's just a little bit cleaner, which is why we do it that way. So let's go ahead and use this identity. So we're going to use the entire right-hand side of this identity and substitute that in for our original function within our integral here. So what we're going to get is 1 half times cosine of a minus b. So in our case, that's 4 pi x minus pi x. Then we get plus cosine of a plus b. So that's 4 pi x plus pi x dx. Now we just need to simplify as much as we can. We'll bring the 1 half out in front of the integral because it's a constant coefficient. Then here we'll get cosine of 3 pi x because 4 pi x minus pi x is 3 pi x. Then we'll get plus cosine of 4 pi x plus pi x is 5 pi x dx. Now you can see we've converted the product of two cosine functions into the sum of two cosine functions. The sum is clearly a lot easier to evaluate than the product. Looking at the product initially, we're not quite sure where to go unless we have this identity. The sum we can just evaluate term by term without any trouble. We know that the integral of cosine is sine. So what we're going to get here is sine of 3 pi x. But then remember, according to chain rule, we have to divide by the derivative of this inside function. So we get 1 over 3 pi, because the derivative of 3 pi x is 3 pi. So we divide by that. Then same thing here, we'll get sine of 5 pi x. But then we have to divide this result here by the derivative of the inside function. So 1 over 5 pi. And then we can't forget to add our constant of integration, c. So now to simplify, we'll just bring this 1 over 3 pi out in front and we'll multiply it by our 1 half here. So we'll get 1 over 6 pi times sine of 3 pi x. We'll bring the 1 over 5 pi out in front and we'll multiply it by the 1 half and we'll get plus 1 over 10 pi times sine of 5 pi x plus c. And that's it. That's our final answer. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.